the final strains of tonight's national anthem as sung by Don Wright. And the lights come up. Time for tonight's Keys to the Game is brought to you by your helpful SoCal Honda dealers. For those, we go to the Anaheim bench to Ken French. Tony, thank you. With assistant coach Bob Woods facing a team that doesn't give up a lot of shots. One of the best net minders in the league in Josh Harding. How do you increase some scoring chances early and get some points on the board? Well, I think unlike the other night, we can't be turning pucks over at their blue line. You know, we have to get pucks deep. That's our strength down low, and we usually create a lot of offense from that. So that's the game plan. Bob, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, John, let's head back upstairs. Thank you, Kent. There's a good look at Josh Harding. We got a pair of silly siders tonight because at the other end, it's Jonas Hiller in goal for the Ducks. Hiller coming off a 35 save performance and a win here on Monday against the Islanders. The referees for tonight's game are Paul Dvorsky and Francois Saint Laurent. The linesmen are Derek Nansen and Mark Shuchek. Minnesota has been offensively challenged when away from XL Energy Center. They give up a goal a game more on the road than they do at home, but Brian, their problem has been finding the back of the net. They average under two goals a game on the road this season. They're going to try to match against this line here tonight as we see Brodeen and Suter, the defense pair we expect to match up against the Getzloff line out there to begin the game. And it's going to be Cook, Brodziak, and Mitchell that opposes them all night. Kyle Brodziak is their shutdown center in the middle. In games past, however, they have not been able to take Getzloff out of the equation. Fowler takes the carom of the first save of the game by Jonas Hiller and plays it behind the net for his partner, Ben Lovejoy. Fowler had a wonderful game here on Monday night, tying a career high with three points. He had a shorthanded goal and two assists. Now has 16 points in his last 20 games as his pass off the boards goes all the way down into the Minnesota zone. Harding gets his first touch as he plays it to the corner. And Nico Koivu rims it around. It comes back to him off a strange bounce in the Zamboni corner. And here come the Wild with speed. Commonville plays it down low. And Koivu works it back for Parise. Long shot by Scandella. Missed the mark. Yeah, did not miss by much either. And of course, this is a real dangerous group. For the Minnesota Wild, Koivu and Parise do an awful lot of the offensive damage for the Wild. Salani to the corner, chips it into the zone and tracks it down himself. Paul Mary given a rough ride there by Clayton Stoner, but keeps possession. Now gets it back from Salani and fires it through a screen that missed everything. Held in, Alex Grant with his Honda Center debut, and his shot comes around and out. Grant played 11 days ago in San Jose in his only NHL appearance. For a goal in that game, I talked to him at length this morning. He said, you know what, uh, even though I've been here for a little while, been able to practice with the big club, he goes, I'm nervous. I'm nervous all the time, nervous before every practice. He's a big right-hand shot defenseman, and he forces Zucker wide, and Hiller holds his bid. Grant had 11 family members in San Jose a week ago Saturday night when he scored that NHL first goal. It was a plus one, as you saw, he got limited ice time. Was the third leading scoring defenseman in the American League at the time of his recall. Those folks that came to visit Alex Brand included four people who flew all the way from Nova Scotia and what a leap of faith, Tom. There were no guarantees that he was going to be in the lineup, but it certainly paid off for them all. Well, they came from Anaganish, and he said they were in Washington, D.C. at first because they were coming stateside to see him play in the American League in Norfolk. And of course, as soon as they got here, including his mother, father, uncle, and brother, he got recalled. So then they jumped on a plane and flew to the West Coast. He was scratched in his initial NHL foray here at Honda Center, then traveled the day after Thanksgiving with the team to San Jose. So his family drove up the coast, and it was well worth it. They saw him pick up his first NHL goal. Hiller makes his save on a sharp angle shot out of the corner from Commonville. And the Ducks recover possession. Hampus Lindholm goes right up the middle with it, and this will go right on the Minnesota goal and able to change. You look at the fourth line of the Minnesota Wild, and an adjustment from their head coach, Mike Doe. Danny Heatley actually patrolling the left wing on that fourth line. It's a little tip as Ballard led the rush, then got a piece of the shot. Koibu takes the centering pass off his skate. Parise spun around as he gives chase. Parise had two goals in the Wilds win at home against San Jose on Sunday, and he forces the Ducks to ice it. Parise also had two goals when these teams met back on October the 5th. We're talking 
to Bruce Boudreaux this morning about that big line for the Wild, Parise and Koivu, and he says, you know what, they generate most of their chances because of their work ethic, and we saw that on that last shift. They are in on top of the Anaheim defense in a hurry. It's a four-checking line. Parise is especially quick. Off the one face-off, Botman with a nice pass ahead. Paul Mary draws back into the lineup after being a healthy scratch against the Islanders here on Monday, and then he goes to the bench for a change. Lovejoy pinches up the wall, his point covered by Winnick, who holds it in. And Kanapka able to force it back out center. He wants to change as Fowler rims it back around, and in the Dutch won't allow anyone else to change for a while as they keep the pressure on. Scandella reaching. Montreal native able to work it ahead, and Parise gets it out. Swept off the stick of Tory Mitchell as he pursues to the corner. Saku Koivu reverses it around. And the Wild able to hold it in. Matt Cook dumped below the goal line, the former Pittsburgh Penguin. Off the glass and out from Fowler. Kyle Brodziak playing his 500th NHL game tonight. Dumps it right back in. And Cook forces it back around for Brodziak. Good work down low by Minnesota. They're keeping the top line for the Ducks hemmed in the defensive zone. Yeah, that is the game plan. Make them play in their own end. Lyman chipped out and gets off strides through neutral ice. Has Perry with it. Pulls it in. Back for Perry in front. I don't know if it ever got to Harding. I believe it may have been blocked. By Suter. Yeah, I think it goes off the leg of Suter, who was well positioned but had not tied up the stick to Corey Perry. Potman behind the Anaheim goal as we're just over five minutes in, and boy, he puts a strike on Benino's stick. Ahead to Paul Mary, and he's tripped up into the Minnesota zone. Solani to the corner, trying to work it away from Jared Spurgeon. And comes Charlie Coyle, and he had the physical advantage on Paul Mary. Scandella now double teamed as he works it back to the near side. Jason Zucker, a native of Newport Beach, California, just recalled two days ago from Iowa, the American League, on his second tour of duty with the Wild this season, number 16 and white. Yeah, the book on Zucker is that he has got terrific speed, not the biggest guy in the world. Remember, I mentioned he, he's gone down to the fourth line. Zucker has taken his spot on the left wing on the Wild second line with Coyle. And Niederreier, he is expected to add offense. And speaking of offense, Getzloff looks for Corey Perry. Actually gets a stick on that shot. And it goes off of the inside of the right knee of Ryan Suter. That's a little bit of a break for Suter. He does not tie up the stick to Corey Perry. That's not an easy thing to do, by the way, because Perry is so deceptive. And he guards that stick so well in front of the net. Makes it very difficult for defenders to kind of get hold of it. We'll call Suter's name a lot tonight. The league in ice time, he's played on average over 29 minutes a game this year. Harding makes the save there on Perry. Last year, Suter led the league in ice time, and he played just over 27 minutes a game. So he's ramped it up, hard as that may be to believe, and an icing call here against the Ducks. This season with the Ducks score five goals or more, and they have in the last two games. That means you'll get free wings from Hooters. Print the coupon. Head to Hooters, your destination for free wings in Southern California. Fourth line on the ice for the Ducks. Jackman and Bolesky on the wing. Steckel can you win a big draw here against Pico Koivu. I thought this line had a very good game against the Islanders on Monday. Steckel has played only three games since his recall, and he's been over 60% in the faceoff circle. That's his calling card. And off of one faceoff, Anaheim gets the chase. And so there's a matchup win for Dave Steckel. He goes up against Miku Koivu. The Wild on the ice and get their top line over the boards. They've got a territorial advantage, but they can't get possession of the puck. Steckel probably be very important in tonight's game. The Wild are a very good faceoff team. Third in the league a season ago. They're in the top ten again this year. They got a lot of options. Koivu's over 55%. Zanin Kanapka doesn't take as many draws, but he's over 60%. Pagliano with goals in the last two games dumps it in. Boy, came off the end boards and just rolled right to the near post. 
Botman pitches at the line to try to hold it in, but doesn't. And here's Koibu the other way. Miko Koibu with a hard rebound off the chest of Hiller. And then Botman checked into the net, knocking it off behind his goaltender. They'll put that back on while we're away. No score at Honda Center. For Who Got It Done, brought to you by YP.com, the new way to do with Cam Fowler taking his place amongst some of the elite defensemen in the NHL of late. You know, we've seen it so many times over the years when someone's defensive part of their game really picks up. The offense comes along at the same time and has done that for Fowler. He's playing a ton of minutes, of course, for Bruce Boudreaux as he gets rewarded, he and Ben Lovejoy, for their outstanding play. What would they do without that defensive combination? With all the injuries they've had, what a what a job they've done on both sides of the puck. To your point, Brian, he's eighth in the league in block shots entering tonight. He's tenth in the league in assists among defensemen as well as the defensive side of the game came along this year, especially in the last six weeks. So too came the offense that we always knew was there with Cam. At 40 points in his rookie season, which now seems like a long time ago, three years ago. You know, he's a different player now, and his shot is significantly improved, I believe, from the time that he was a rookie, and it's, it's made him more of a weapon when the Ducks are on the power play. That puck goes off of the glass, so just no one, delay a game penalty against Ben Lovejoy. He's shy of 100 points now in his career, and he's only played 228 games at the defense position. That's a fairly prolific pace. Especially when you consider he's still just just 22 less than a week ago. The puck clearly went off the glass, and now we got a penalty, but it's going against Minnesota, is it? At the end of the play here, I think, I think we got points that even up. Yep. yep. Getzloff goes off, and, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't see what happened. The players had made their way back to their respective benches, and then they were. Pulled away, it's Matt Cook and Ryan Getzloff. They continue the conversation. Matt Cook has done his job. Any any time that he can pull Ryan Getzloff off the ice for a couple of minutes, that's a that's a win for the Minnesota Wild. And you can see that Bruce Boudreaux is none too pleased about it. The Ducks are the tenth least penalized team in the league. However, they've the penalties been shorthanded more than they've been on the power play six times in their last nine games they don't get that many power play chances as it were but of late the opponents have been getting the better end of that now it's four on four and the Ducks get it right down on the doorstep for Fowler and boy Harding made the save but he wasn't sure where it went I, I think he lost the handle John at the very last second Minnesota with minus two and four on four this season and Anaheim was having their way in the offensive zone there. Harding tips one back and it's Parise who had his pass blocked out of the zone as Lovejoy got a stick on it. A partial three on two rush there for the Wild and they could not execute on the cross ice pass once they got it into the zone. Now we're told the penalties on sportsmanlike conduct was on Kesloff and Matt Cook. Scandella can't get a shot to the net. It was blocked by Benino and Valeski. Couldn't get to it. Otherwise, it was a possible two-on-one. So things have opened up here in the four-on-four. Scandella holds it in on the near side and sends it around. Valeski drops down. Kicks it back below the goal line. Centered in front. And Lindholm starts back. Benino snaps it ahead as Valeski turns the rock. Zucker forces it wide. Now he plays it on the half wall of Lindholm. And he is dispersed by Scandella. Benino came in, got a stick on it to keep the puck in the Minnesota zone. 25 seconds in the coincidental minors to get Slava Cook. You know, looking at Hampus Lindholm going back to the Anaheim bench with Alex Grant, a right-handed shot coming in the lineup. Lindholm has moved over to the left side for tonight's game. Good stick by Cogliano as he deflects it right on. Hardy easily knifing that away. Cogliano has proven to be a little streaky of late. He's got goals in his last two, and he'll make a bid here. That's broken up by Peter Wright. Penalties are over. As Penix leads the puck to the corner. Cogliano moves it along. Goals in his last two games. And remember earlier this season, Cogliano had a four-game goal scoring streak. 
that's that streaky nature of which I was speaking of. Now he gets the pass and brings it right back in. Gets locked. Fires over top, and Harding didn't see it till the last second. Yeah, that may have hit something on route to the goal. Penner behind the net does the work. Brings it to the near corner. Turns, throws it, deflected right on. Perry got a piece of it. Harding covers up. Anaheim getting it done down low in the Minnesota zone. Now, this is the 18th time that the Koibu brothers have played against one another. Older brother Saku has had an edge, at least in the one loss column. Oh, Saku, 10, 3, and 4 against younger brother Miko. And they play a lot head to head against one another. And that is Saku's job tonight to prevent little brother from being on the scoreboard. I wonder what the conversations are like in the summertime because Miko has more points when these two when the two teams, when these two brothers have gotten together as far as individually speaking goes. I get the feeling they like the fact that it's now the 18th meeting, Brian, because such a big deal was made of it by the media for yeah. quite a while, and you never got the feeling that either one of them wanted to make a big deal of it. Icing the call here off the faceoff. 9-10 to go in the opening period. A reminder, it's the holiday season. you got two weeks now between now and the Christmas holidays. Still time to purchase a Ducks holiday pack. you get two tickets to three upcoming games as well as a neck pillow, retractable earbuds, and more. Order today at AnaheimDucks.com slash holiday pack. Steckle to take the draw in the ring to the left of Harding, but the draw won by Brodziak. Kyle Brodziak, another little solid centerman in the faceoff circle at 52% on the year for the Wild. has traditionally been one of the better face-off men in the league. Long stretch pass tipped into the zone by Valeski. Harding handles it for Clayton Stoner. Stoner was injured the first time these two teams met. Did not play in St. Paul. Had 4-3 overtime win by the Ducks. Now Fowler steps up to keep the puck in. And Valeski takes it away from Stoner down low. Centers. Oh, wow. Harding is all the way to the near post. And Valeski has fed it back to the other side. Yeah, good play by Valeski. A really good shoot for him, Doug. Kept a couple of pucks alive. And here's another one he keeps alive. Speck will try to get out of his way. Valeski had an assist. It's a plus one against the Islanders here on Monday. He'll head back to the bench. Lovejoy winds and fires. Harding gets it with the left hand and then reels it in. We talked a lot about Fowler and his confidence soaring right now. He's been given the green light to jump into the attack. This is Cam Fowler right on the doorstep that Matt Bolesky was looking for. You see he is surrounded by Minnesota Wild defenders. But a good try by Bolesky. Bolesky had a real good shift there. A couple of pucks alive. In on the four check, bang some defensemen around. That's, that's a solid 50 seconds of work there. And again, the Wild clear the hard way. As icing will be the call here off of one face off each team with five shots on goal. The Wild will go to San Jose where they play tomorrow night. In the back end of back to backs against the Sharks. That Mike Yo's club will go to Denver to take on the Avalanche before they return home. Anaheim with one more game on the homestand. That is Sunday here. Another team we haven't seen all year, Brian, the Edmonton Oilers come a call. You never know what you're going to get from the Edmonton Oilers. You're going to get young talent, you know that. Young talent, a lot of speed, but some uh, disciplined defensive plays usually what you get from the Oilers. You know, you were talking about Minnesota's upcoming schedule, John. Seven, including tonight, seven of, of their next eight teams are on the road. So we've had a home heavy schedule thus far. Yeah, the second best home team in the National Hockey League entering tonight's action. They're the fifth worst road team as Lovejoy's long wrist shot is in the glove of Josh Harding. No problem for Josh Harding. So you were talking about him, John, and the fact that he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a couple of years ago. And with, with that disease, Anytime that your internal body heat goes up, it can severely affect people with MS. And Harding has a special cocktail of drugs that help him with that. He also has a cooling vest that he will use if his core temperature gets a little too high. Yeah, last season, Mike Yo was talking this morning. He said basically we didn't have it. Harding played five games a season ago. He missed 33 officially 
as they tried to work on what you called the cocktail, Brian, the, the, the complex mixture of medications that he needs that help him continue to play in the National Hockey League today. And, and, and it's not only playing the games, it's training to be able to play. You know, in the offseason, when it's warm, just, just to be able to put the hours into the gym that professional athletes need to is, is an issue for Josh Hardy. It, it's incredible what this young man has been able to accomplish and, and thrive given the circumstances that he's been dealt with. He's an eighth-year man. He was the goalie of the year in the Western League back when he played for the Regina Pats 10 years ago. Wild have been waiting on him, thinking he could be the heir apparent for a long time, but injuries before the diagnosis have kept him from taking that role. Now, this year, the story, Brian, injuries for Nicholas Backstrom opening the door for Hardy, and since then, he's pretty much taken this net. We went over the numbers at the top of the show. It's a tremendous season. Already career highs in wins and shutouts this season for Hardy. We're not even halfway through the season. 1.50 goals a game, 938 save percentage. Uh, the, the numbers are staggering for him. It is head coach Mike Yo says, you know, when, when asked about his great, greatest attribute, he goes, he's a battler. Another glove save as this time it's Benino pulling the trigger right off the draw. So some rapid fire saves here for Hardy. You know, I, I've heard as well that you know when you were diagnosed with MS and you're a professional athlete, maybe the losses or the tough games don't stick with you quite as long. So there's been a little bit of a change in perspective for Josh Harding that also seems to have really helped this game. Alex Grant off the draw, takes the wrist shot, blocked by Zucker. Ducks fans getting their first look at Grant here in this building. Keep an eye on him when he shoots the puck, folks. Palmieri comes up with a giveaway, and Harding with a point-blank stop. Wasn't sure where it was, and he finally gets the whistle. Yeah, this is a turnover right on the doorstep by Ballard, and Kyle Palmieri almost slides it in the short side. Harding, he's looking behind him. He had that puck trapped between the arm and the body. Big save. You see him squeezing that elbow up against the side of his body, and he had it all the time, but so much padding there, he was unsure. The Ducks have kept the pressure and the play in the Minnesota zone here for the last minute or so. That's the fourth straight draw in the Minnesota zone, and the Wild finally able to get it across the blue line. It's Montaigne. Nudges it ahead, and Danny Heatley gets it deep. Now they'll get a change. Well, they're, they're matching. I mean, every single shift. And sometimes when you're matching, you don't get much of a four-check established. And we've seen that from Minnesota. They haven't had a single scoring chance in this game thus far. Getzlock knocks down a clearing attempt. Into the high slot off the end. The better stick. And speed the other way. As Parise turned away at the blue line. 14 goals on the air for Zach Parise. Leading scorer for the Wild has seven of them on the power play this year. Has a shorthanded goal as well. He is far and away the leader of this hockey team. And he has been as advertised since he signed the big contract a year and a half ago. Poiple for the Ducks trying to get it to winning and then broken up. And Parise leads it ahead. A dynamic effort by Cogliano but it goes all the way into the Anaheim goal. Taken behind the net by Jason Pominville. Koibu gets inside and gets to the puck before Fowler. And then his brother Zach who lifts it out of harm's way. Scandella and Spurgeon play catch back in the Minnesota zone. Jared Spurgeon angles it ahead and Heatley touches it into the Anaheim zone. Under five to go in a scoreless first period at Honda Center. The Ducks with a 9-6 shot advantage. Up left pass deflected, stay in the barn off the near glass, reaching a steckle, wipes it into Minnesota's off. Right to Jackman, and Harding just got back. Yeah, good decision by Jackman. He got it away in a hurry, and Harding had to make a stop. And again, this third line looking good. It's Brian Allen who finds Botnick, jumping into the rush. Molesky, he's in down the middle of the backhander denied, and covered by Harding. Molesky looks skyward. He can't believe it. He thought he had the goaltender on the stick side, but we're still scoring. Anaheim's young defense has been active in the attack. Good pass here by Sammy Botnan. It springs Matt Pileski in a big stop with the blocker. 
by Josh Harding. Bolesky does a great job here. Watch him protect the puck with his left leg. Going to move the puck to the backhand side. Baller goes for the sweep check. The leg of Bolesky protects the puck, unfortunately for him. Josh Harding read it perfectly. Last time these two teams got together, Matt Bolesky and Zenon Kanapka dropped the mitts. Again, icing is the call against the Minnesota Wild. How important is it to play well in the first period against Mike Yo's Wild? Well, they're 14 1 and 2 when they score first in games this season. However, when they trail after one, just 1 7 and 2. Now, their goaltender's keeping them in right now because we've got the scoring chances 7 0 in favor of the Ducks. So it's a good road game so far, if you will, for Minnesota. Brodziak along the near boards back to the line and Scandella across for Spurgeon. Perfect shot by Mitchell gets to it. Cook behind that end for Brodziak. Scandella's pass into the middle. Tory Mitchell fires it just wide. Spurgeon steps up, throws it off the mask of Hiller and he gets lucky. I think the puck ends up on top of the net. That's a strange looking play. I don't think it was intentional to throw it off the mask of Jonas Hiller, but it, it turns out to be a dangerous play. There's the shot. Bounces right up in the air and then lands right up on the top of the goal net. You see Nick Benino come across with his glove. And you know what? You're not allowed to do that. You cannot cover the puck with your hand. Nick Benino's a little bit fortunate there, John. Baby settled on the top of the net like a Brian Hayward sandwich, just like a butterfly with sore feet. And I've been aiming for the bed. <laughs> Good look at Jonas Brodeen, second year defenseman out of Sweden. He's a trigger man, offensively speaking, from the blue line. Has five goals on the year for the Wild, three of them on the power play. Wonderful player. He was on the all-rookie team a year ago. No first-year player played more than Brodine last year. Wrap around from behind the net, and Hiller was there waiting for it as Parise had to go to the backhand. Yeah, this is vintage Zach Parise, very low center of gravity. And you see that Fowler, Parise just kind of spins away from the attempted check of Fowler, and then he pulls his way to the front of the net. That's kind of what we were talking about before with Parise and with Miko Kovu. It's their work ethic. It's a power game that they use to generate the majority of their good scoring chances. I right. talk to people about Zach Parisi, and they say he gets everything he gets out of hard work. This is an undersized guy, Minneapolis native, who played a couple of years up the road at North Dakota, signed the big 13-year contract in the summer of 2012. As I mentioned earlier, he's been as advertised. He led the Wild in scoring a season ago. He leads in scoring again. Hairline fracture of the foot earlier this year, Brian, and immediately was announced he would miss two weeks. He missed one game. Consummate professional. Not like his dad, J.P. Parise. A lot of heart there. Penner gets it deep into the Minnesota zone, and the Ducks get it back with a pass out of the corner. Finds no one from Getzloff, so Hiller will play. Ryan Allen diagonally finds Perry across the line, drops it off, and the captain gets locked. Pulls up there as Nino Niederreiter is right on his hip. Wild get it back, and away they come. Niederreiter offside at the line with Zucker. Has to get back onside, so time and space for Bach. 2.15 to go in a scoreless opening period. Bachman again trying to split the D. Looking for Jackman that time. You know what? It's been there for the Ducks in this game, for sure. And that, we've seen that set play, long pass, but right into the middle of the ice. It was Botman who sprung Valeski moments ago. Now Niederreiter takes it away from Grant behind the net. To the line, Scandella quickly across for Spurgeon. Wrist shot tipped on the way by Zucker and smothered by Hiller. Good stop by Jonas Hiller. All kinds of traffic established in front of the goal crease. The Wild get a puck recovery off of the forecheck. Well, look at Zucker. He's there with Lindholm. You can see that puck actually goes off the leg of Hampus Lindholm and into the bread basket of Jonas Siller. He does a good job to hang on to it. There's any kind of a short little rebound there could have really spelled trouble. 
Hiller was in net the only time these teams met this year. Got the win on a 30 save effort in Excel Energy Center back on October the 5th. Now, Boudreau said that his goalie won him that game. He said they were in our zone all night long, and if not for Hiller, we don't get the points. Spurgeon up the right wall off the faceoff win, and Benino denies it. Now it's on the side of the goal. Benino turns with it there. Uses the dasher to find Paul Marion. Just the screw to the line. Spurgeon covers his point. Brodziak. Hester by Benino. Back for Spurgeon. He'll spin it behind the net. Off the dasher. Taken by Brodziak. Moves it along to the corner. Corey Mitchell tries to center. Denied by Sammy Bott. Allen with a nice outlet. And Paul Mary will play it off the boards and then try to go get it. Quickness of Jared Spurgeon, another one of the undersized defensemen that has found his way in the NHL because he just moves so darn well. Boy, was blocking the pass, and now the Ducks work in the Minnesota zone. Under a minute to go in the period as Parisi leads it back the other way with Commonville. Tries to give it back, but that's swatted away on a good defensive play by Lovejoy. Ducks in a hurry. Boy, wide on the right side. Tries to backhand in front for Winnick. That was denied by his brother Nico. To the line, Fowler holds it in. Cogliano throws it down low. Brodine leaning on Winnick. Winnick wins the puck and a penalty coming up to the wild as we're down to the final half minute of the opening period. You're one hand on the stick and you run the risk of taking a holding penalty down low and this is what happens to Brodine. You can take one hand off the stick and a little bit of a grab to Daniel Winnick. Even though Winnick has one hand on his stick as the attacking player, they're giving a lot more leeway, so it's a holy penalty against Bodine and a red hot Anaheim power play. It's their first opportunity tonight. Three for five in their last three games, and as I mentioned earlier, it's the five that stands out to me. The Ducks not getting a lot of chances of late on the power play. That's too bad because they've been so good with the extra man. I think teams are really leery all of a sudden, John, about putting this group onto the ice with a man advantage. And there's the guy that runs the show. Brian Getzloff just makes such good decisions with the puck. And now that he's added that shot into the mix, power play has really taken off. Somewhat surprising and uncharacteristic, Minnesota 25th in the league. Now the Traditionally, been very good, in part because of their goaltending and their overall style year in, year out. They're shorthanded. And Nico Poison wins the draw. Ryan Sutter just plays it across. As we're down to 10 seconds to go in the period, if the Ducks are going to make something of the power play in the first period, they're going to have to hurry. Long pass from Fowler to Benito, but he loses the puck inside the blue line. It's cleared back by the Wild. Carry over a minute 28 of power play time when the scoreless second period commences. Well, this was a good period for the Ducks. They had by far the better of the grade A scoring chances. And now their primary task seems to be to figure out Josh Hardy because he looks like a guy, as advertised, John, that's in the zone. Harding has done most of his damage this year at home where he's won 13 of his 16 games. But he keeps the Wild in it in the opening period. As the Ducks with the better of the chances in a scoreless first period of play at Honda Center. Much more coming up in our first intermission. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Anaheim Ducks hockey is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Try the new Fajita Ranch Melt for only $3.99 plus tax at a participating Jack in the Box near you. Well, we are where we thought we were when we started at 7.30. Although some of us thought we started at 7 o'clock. <laughs> no score between the Minnesota Wild and Anaheim Ducks after one period of play. John and Brian back with you. It, it seems like Groundhog Day when the Wild come to town. Regardless of who the players are, the coaches are, we find ourselves in a tight hockey game. And despite a lot of chances, it's a scoreless one at this point. When you get goaltending like they have got from Josh Harding this year, they can play kitty bar the door on the road and try and win a one up And it looked like that's what they were trying to do in the opening period. All the best scoring chances belong to the Ducks. That was Corey Perry on the doorstep. Cam Fowler lost the handle right there at the moment of truth. You can see he wanted to go upstairs with that one. Uh, gets lot from long range past a screen to Harding. He doesn't miss by much. Kyle Palmieri perhaps the best chance. A turnover and Harding was able to squeeze the blocker arm and the body to Together to prevent that from going in. Perry and Getzloff and Penner have been all around it. Mal Mapaleski, he broke in all alone. 
only to be denied by Josh Harding. Best chances that the Wild got were kind of funny plays. That was Spurgeon from the corner off the noggin of Jonas Hiller lands right on top of the net, and then Zach Parise on a wraparound. That was the best chances that the Wild had in the opening 20. So great defensive period for the Ducks. Now they just got to find a way to break through on Harding. Well, they hope to continue the chances as they'll start on the power play in the second period. For more, we go to the Ducks bench right now in Ken French. Johnny, thank you with assistant coach Brad Lauer. You guys had some good chances in the first, but couldn't convert. Now you start with a minute 28 on the power play on fresh ice. How do you take advantage of that? Well, I mean, they're fairly aggressive, so we need really good puck movement. When we get an opportunity, we've got to take the pucks to the net. We've got to get guys going to the blue paint. Brad, appreciate it. Thank you. Johnny, back up to you. A minute 28 to be exact, Kent, on that power play to begin the second period as we look at the numbers from the opening 20 minutes. The only thing that really matters, the goose eggs at the top there. It's a scoreless draw thus far. Interesting what Brad Lauer just said about getting people in the blue paint. Uh, I, I think that has made just an enormous difference on the Ducks' power play this season. Uh, Dustin Penner knows that's his role. I think ultimately it frees up a little bit more space for Corey Perry, Nick Benino down low. And there's that pass right up the middle of the ice again. So that's, that's something that the Ducks coaching staff has spotted on their video scouting report, and uh, it's worked very well for them thus far. Fowler hounded by Cook was able to clear the line, and as Suter brings it back in, Offside is the call. Ryan Suter, pointless in his last eight games, was the second leading scoring defenseman last season in the NHL. He was a finalist for the Norris Trophy. Goalless on the season, a little bit of a surprise for Ryan Suter because he does get a lot of power play time for a while. Got a good shot, too. Minute to go on the Anaheim power play, which carried over from the end of the first period. This was not a very good pass up the wing from Fowler, put it into the skates of Getzloff, forcing Cam to go back and get it as the Wilds send it down. 45 seconds in the man advantage. And up the near side, he puts it right on the tape for Benino. Benino will throw it around, and off the end boards, Getzloff has it right corner. Trying to get it back to Benino, broken up by Marco Scandella. Benino lost his stick as he tries to pick it up along the boards. He picks up the puck as well. Perry gets it back and open his foul. And traffic in front, but it's kicked away. And a good defensive play in front of the net by Spurgeon, the defenseman. Yeah, and much like Cam Fowler and Ben Lovejoy on the penalty kill for the Ducks, Spurgeon is not your prototypical penalty killing defenseman either. Small guy, but very, very quick, and he gets into the corners in a hurry. Lindholm lost the handle, and that just... Blew up the breakout coming out of the Anaheim zone, and now the penalty is over to Brodeen. He's out of the box, the Wild full strength. And Anaheim comes up empty on the game's first power play. Not a good power play for the Ducks. The coaches will always worry that a power play like that will have kind of a negative residual effect on the rest of the game. So here we go, Bruce is hoping to see a big shift on his third and fourth lines. And the Ducks did not get a shot on goal during that power play as Lindholm plays it back in neutral ice. Steckel is there to bank it in. Ballard hinges over the former Vancouver Canuck. He was bought out in the offseason by the Canucks, then signed as a free agent. Has missed 16 games due to injury already this season for the Wild. He bought at Minnesota native and played his college hockey. At the school, they call the U up there. For those of us not from the state of Minnesota, we just call it the University of Minnesota. Puck tipped in to the Anaheim zone by Charlie Coyle. He pursues it, but it's rimmed around the boards away, and Cogliano feeds it across. Love Joy picks it off the boards. All the way, and he scores! It's Alex Grant. I beg your pardon. Second game, second goal. That wasn't the big shot, that was the wrist shot, but it was big enough. I think it totally surprised Josh Harding. This was a relatively severe angle. Watch where the release point is relative to the faceoff dot. Any kind of shot outside of the dot is one that goaltenders will tell you they got to come up with. But, boy, you can see he rips that one short side against Josh Harding. I was joking with Alex Grant this morning when he found out he was going to play in tonight's game. I said, you know, you got to keep it going here. You scored a goal in your only NHL game, and he kind of smiled at me, but he keeps it going. It's one in a row. You can't break the streak. Now it's two in a row. Grant had six goals in the American. 
American League playing for Norfolk. And now another penalty coming up to the wild as Anaheim brings him right back in on the ensuing faceoff. Getzloff curls it down low. Boydoo stays with it up the boards, trying to saucer it over, but it's broken up. And Anaheim will go right back on the power play. It's a high sticking penalty. Uh, against the Wilds, so oh boy, an opportunity for the Ducks to break this one open a little bit. Agliano and Winnick drew the assists on the Grant goal a moment ago as we look at the penalty. The penalty is against Brodeen. And the second time that he will head to the box of holding the stick penalty against him. Brodeen came into the night with just six penalty minutes. And he sits. And the Ducks over one on the power play. Win the draw. And immediately they work in the Minnesota zone. Penner gives it back. The cross ice pass intended for Getzla finally makes its way to it. And now he'll settle it on the left wing half wall. Down low for Perry. Back pass to Penner. Hit the crossbar. And then Perry robbed on the rebound by the glove of Hardy. Uh, Corey Perry didn't get much on it. And Josh Hardy, remember what Mike Gill said, he's a battler, does not quit on the play. Dustin Penner, I don't know if Hardy stopped that or went off the post, but he stops the second one. What a save with the right hand for Josh Hardy. That's off the crossbar, rebound comes out, and Hardy snares it. It was just a brilliant save by Josh Hardy. Boy, that was crossbar and post when we look at it from the overhead. Ducks fans thought they scored twice, but they come up empty. Still on the power play, and it's a face-off win. Gets lobbed from Fowler. Near circle, looks up. Again on the doorstep for Perry, and he can't handle it cleanly. Harding holds on. Yeah, the, the puck hit Corey Perry's stick blade and just kind of popped right up in the air. Perry. That front net presence. There's the pass by Getzloff. Getzloff has to flip the pass over the stick of Spurgeon to get it into the hands of Perry. And the puck just would not settle down for him. Benino out to take the draw. With a couple of quick whistles on the power play. 35 seconds into it. Now some adjustments on the net. You can keep your number one power play unit out there a little longer. They catch a little breather. And perhaps keep the wild hemmed in but they don't as Suter feeds it all the way down and Hiller boy very confident with the puck as he handles it at the side of his neck. Get Bruce Boudreaux's attention. Here's a turnover and boy Harding was behind the net but Benino couldn't get to a bouncing puck and the wild able to clear. Adventures with the goaltenders handling the puck. I'll say this much Jonas Hiller got my heart rate going. In. Now Penner retreats the wraparound. Back to the point, it's Fowler across to Getzloff. Still 40 seconds in the power play. Fowler can't open a shooting lane. He'll play it off the boards for the captain. Getzloff over skates it. Scandella pokes it away, and Koivu will skate it out of harm's way. Nico Koivu takes it as far as the Ducks will let him only have his shot blocked by Fowler. And Anaheim recovers possession. Second power play unit out with just 25 seconds. Remains in the penalty to Brodine. Lindholm carries the mail, chips it up the far side. Salani behind the goal. Ricochet right back into the blue paint. Covered up, and Ballard now in the corner trying to clear it away. Koivu, along with Molesky and Salani. The open man is Lindholm at the line. Feeds it over. Rich right on by Paul Mary. Big rebound by Harding. Taken in behind the net. The penalty is over to Brodine. Yeah, that's a good low shot by Paul Mary. Koleski eludes his man, throws it off the high glass. Solani can't get to the rebound as Ballard used his body to keep him away. The second power play unit actually more effective than the first John. They simplified things. They got shots through to the front of the net. Harding forced to make another good stop. The Ducks now over two with the extra man tonight as Boleski tips it through and Gagliano pursues. Steckel is there, Brodine under duress. Throws it up the near side. Allen pinched, but couldn't keep it in. Steckel dumps it back in. Suter winds it around. Allen has to retreat as Kanapka, the one-time duck, clears the zone. Eight years ago, Zenon Kanapka was a member of the 
then Anaheim Mighty Ducks played 23 games in the 05-06 campaign here. Bachman winds it around and nobody home on the far boards, so this is icing against Anaheim. Yeah, David Steckel will stay out, obviously, on the icing call to take this draw. Steckel was without a contract during the offseason. He actually went to the Wild training camp on a professional tryout. They signed him, but only to an American League contract. When the Ducks came calling with an NHL contract, he was able to sign with the Ducks. And, uh, he's done a nice job, Judge. Cogliano from the center dumps it in and Harding out to play it. Stoner taps it ahead and room for Kanopka coming out of his own zone. Spurgeon sends it around. Bachman gets inside. Allen behind the net. And a battle it away and does for Fontaine. Justin Fontaine now from behind the net. College player who was on draft and signed a couple of years ago as a free agent out of Minnesota Duluth. Fontaine has found himself on every line for Mike Hill so far this season. He has six goals. And he leads it into the Anaheim zone. Zucker as it played away behind the back by Perry. And now gets locked. Saucers it over on the backhand. Perry runs it down. Corey Perry in behind the Minnesota goal. Keeps it deep. Gets off, turns away from Coyle, and then lost it. Coyle falls down, and he loses the puck to Penner. And this is the Ducks' big line playing as they can, cycling the puck, playing down low. Lindholm gets it to the net. Harding holds on. The Ducks strike first here in the second. Alex Grant, two games with the Ducks. Two pretty important goals. This was his first goal as a member of the Anaheim franchise. The kind of a knuckleball that fooled Antti Niemi. And this one tonight was just a brilliant wrist shot that beats Harding short side. And I told you he said he was nervous. So that'll help the nerves. 12 points to lead all scorers for the Norfolk Admirals at the time of his recall back on the 28th of November. Six goals. It was third in the AHL amongst blue line. And Lindholm with a diving effort to try to knock the puck away from Brodziak after he was beaten on the boards. Grant falls down behind the net and Cook comes up with it. Spurgeon tries to settle a bouncing puck at the near point. Cook on a back pass that's blocked by Solani. Turns away from Solani behind the net. Grant picks him up to the line. Spurgeon for Scandella. Winds and fires that shot blocked by Paul Mary, who will scale it up and out. Scandella had a couple of assists for the Wild in their win at home on Sunday against San Jose. But ended tonight with four points in his last four games. Jason Zucker puts it behind the net. Coyle centering pass. Lance is high in the zone. Nice play by Cogliano off the bench to steal it away. And here's Winnick off the wing and a glove save by Harding. Make sure you're with us at the $10,000 Ducks Kings Poker Tournament coming up in February. It's February 20th at San Manuel Indian Bingo and Casino. A $25 buy-in with all proceeds going to the Ducks Foundation and Kings Care. Register today at ducks.nhl.com slash poker. You must be 21 or older. Wild tonight, John. The eight shots on goal from the forwards. Only one scoring chance, and that belongs to the youngster. Zucker. So Anaheim against this line in particular, Parise, Koivu, has uh, really done a number. Pollenville has been quiet so far, but one goal game. Puck knocked down by a high stick as Winnick trying to keep it in the zone. He's the first to play it, so the faceoff will come back. Daniel Winnick picked up an assist on the goal earlier in this period. He now has five assists in his last three games and seven in his last eight. Sacco Koivu uh, going up again against brother Miko John is undefeated since his return in regulation since his return to the lineup. 4 for 1 2. He's got better game after game. He's, he's kind of regained his speed. Something, uh, I think, especially for older players when they're returning from an injury, it takes them a little while to get the motor going again. I remember his first game back, he told me that despite having two assists in that game, that his legs didn't feel good, particularly early in that game. Off 
offside is the call here against the Wild. Just 15 games in all in the Metro Boy Blue now, 39 years of age. His role has changed, like it does for a lot of older players who were there in his career, who kind of on to produce a lot more offense. The uh, role here was pretty well defined. He wants to get points, of course, but Linick and Cogliano, they have become the go-to shutdown line for Bruce Boudreau and have done a really nice job in that regard. A battling face-off win for Steckel there. And Allen feathers it in on goal. Ryan Allen plus four in his last two games. Now he holds it in at the near point. And the Wild angle it out. Heatley and Botman do battle for it. Danny Heatley, as Brian mentioned earlier, relegated now to fourth line duty here for the Wild. He's minus nine on the season, but he's minus nine in his last 12 games. in what is the final year of his contract. A good, hard-working shift in the fourth line again as Jackman and Valeski team up to keep the Wild hemmed in. Now Grant turns back in the Anaheim zone and around for Lindholm. Montaigne got a piece of it up in the boards. Valeski able to get it out. Panopka off the glass back in. Miller taps it for Grant as it was skipping away from him. Mitchell in the high slot tries to hand it off. Maybe a little too much passing for the Wild there. Bordine holds it in. That's blocked. And pumps down. Here comes Corey Perry. Pettit blocked it. Perry into the zone. Goes to the high slot. Runs in to Hampus Lindholm. He's hurt too. Yeah, he's shaking up. Back come the Wild. And they're still on side as Perry heads to the bench. Pettit on the back check. Knocked it away from Corey Mitchell. And Getzloff pulls it off the end wall. Angles it ahead for Solani off the bench. In, fires high, short side and miss. Open ice for Tatum Solani. He was thinking top of the net. Perry sits on the end of the Anaheim bench. They get it to Solani right back through the crease and underneath Harding. What a stop again by Josh Harding with that right hand. Oh my goodness, Tatum Solani thought he had a wide open net. He did everything he wanted to with that puck, but Harding was just a little. Welcome back to Honda Center. One nothing Ducks. Thanks to this guy, Alex Grant. Second career goal, second career game. What does it feel like to find the net again this time on home ice? Oh, it's nice. Nice to get the team on the board. Uh, you know, we got to keep firing pucks in the net here. The goalie's playing really well, makes a big save. So uh, keep getting pucks in net and uh, a little more traffic. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Grant's goal, the difference in the game, is off the face off Lindholm, forced back into his own zone, and he chips it up and out. Benino lobs it in, a bouncer wide of Hardy. Paul Mary goes in after him. Played away, Grant to one knee to hold it in at the far point. Paul Mary collides down low as the puck comes through for Solani. Tamu protects on the forehand, across for Grant, winds, rips it, oh wow. And that one blocked inadvertently high off the body by Charlotte Boyle, who almost slid too far. Palmieri tripped up. Wow. No call and a scoring chance as a result for the Wild. And Hiller to the rescue. Yeah, that's a big stop by Jonas Hiller. One thing not to call a penalty, but when it results in a great A scoring chance, usually whistles are heard very quickly. Yeah, here's Palmieri, and there's the trip, and that's a pretty obvious one. You would think even Zucker was looking at the referee. Kind of looking at him and saying, well, you're not going to call that. I'm going to go back to the hit by Campus Lindholm on Corey Perry right here. And uh, Perry was shaken up a little bit. Took that right on the button, as they say. Went back to the bench. Pop was right over his shoulder, making sure that he was all right. And uh, he looks much better now over at the Anaheim bench. And before we went to break, Tamu Solani with a couple of good opportunities. Didn't realize Harding got his glove on that first one. Well, this was the best chance right here. What a save by Harding. One timer by Solani with half a net. Right in face. Boy, he can't buy one right now, John. Brodine from out of the Minnesota zone. He misses his intended target. Parisi, no icing. And Lovejoy back to get it. And Anaheim brings it back. Boy, on the wing for winning. And winning. 
thrown to that front, and it's smothered by Harding as Saku's stick was tied up nicely. That right hand of Josh Harding has really been something to watch in tonight's game. I mean, the Ducks, maybe it's because he is catching with the right hand, but there's very few rebounds tonight because Harding's just catching everything thrown towards his goal. Face off to the left of Harding, controlled by the Ducks and falling away. Valeski fired it over top. Allen pinches up the wall but can't keep it in and it's lobbed over the glass and out of play and they're going to rule this one deflected says Paul Dvorsky so no penalty as the Wild living dangerously. You could win a 2014 Honda Odyssey coming up later this season in fan appreciation night here at Honda Center. All you have to do is log on to AnaheimDucks.com backslash Honda Odyssey. You must be 18 years of age to enter to win. Steckel wins the faceoff, and Valeski wires it down low. The big centerman out of Ohio State to the corner, hit hard there by Clayton Stoner. Now Ballard gets some directions from his netminder and skates it out. Long, weak wide pass off the skate of Matt Cook. Brodziak throws it to the net, the pad saved by Hiller, and this one deflected out of play. As Jackman tried to play it, it went off Fontaine's stick. Maybe no surprise that this is such a low-scoring game. First of all, the last nine games between the Ducks and the Wild have all been decided by two goals or fewer. And this season, the Wild have yielded fewer five-on-five -five goals than any other team in the NHL. So this is a team built around defense and obviously great goaltending. It keeps them in an awful lot of games, even when the offense isn't doing much. Corey Perry back out on the ice for Anaheim. That's always good news. After he was shaken up in collision with Hampus Lindholm. Fowler protects the puck, keeps it on the perimeter. Lovejoy gets enough of it to clear the zone. Seven minutes and ten seconds to go in the second period. Alex Grant at 237 of the middle frame from Cogliano and Winnick is the game's only goal. As Anaheim leads Minnesota one to nothing. Here's a turnover. Perry leaves it off for Getzloff. The line one timer by Fowler. Slot. Perry was upended. Penner was tied up. And Wild bring it back. Koivu off the glass and in, and Lovejoy turns away from one defender and then away from Koivu as he sends it up the near wall and gets off with it. Into the Minnesota zone. The captain pulls it in. Stick handles below the goal line, almost loses his footing, gets it back. Lindholm rattles the high glass on a great feet. Game goal scoring streak for Corey Perry. Gets off with a rush off ice. He buys some time here, throws the brakes on, and he loses Ballard. Lindholm's shot goes just wide, and Perry just sniffs it out. It, it comes off the end boards. It's a bouncing puck to watch this. That, that puck never hits the ice on the second bounce. It's Corey Perry swaps it right out of the air into the back of the net. That's just a big goal for Anaheim. And I said he does it again. It's the third longest goal scoring streak in franchise history. He now has eight goals in his last seven games. Second in the league in goal scoring with 21 on the year. It was the fastest route to 20 goals in his prolific career. Now it's the fastest route to 21, and that's a goal scorer's goal. No, he's, he's just got such tremendous high hand coordination. This puck is not sitting on the ice. And he bats it off of Harding and into the back of the net. So tonight is game number 34 for the Ducks. That's goal 21 for Corey Perry. Last season in 44 games, he had 15. So he is way, way ahead of last year's pace. Game in tonight, sixth in the league in scoring. One of only three in the league with at least 20. Spurgeon now sends it wide of the Anaheim goal. The rebound came off the boards to Heatley, who was tied up by Grant. Two nothing Ducks. 5:45 to go, second period. Brian, I talked a little bit about the difference it makes in Minnesota's game, and it seems like it always has when you can score first or have the lead on this hockey team. They have to play in what is not their comfort zone when they're chasing. Pass off a Minnesota stick, so no icing here, and Harding will pull it in 
and cover up as Saku Koivu is right there. So Lindholm missed the mark, but Perry was there on the short hop. It's two to nothing. Well, Corey Perry is white hot. Eight goals in his last seven games, and it has moved him up the charts to say the least. Only Alexander Ovechkin, currently in the National Hockey League, has more goals than the former Hart Trophy winner from three seasons ago. Ovechkin coming off a four goal game the other night. Got a little bit of separation. Uh, that's good, right? Four, that's four pretty darn good. A quintessential period for Corey Perry. You know, he, he takes a couple of hits, sits on the bench. You know, a lot of players might not have even returned. Then he comes right back out and scores a goal. And it's just, it's who he is and who he has always been in his eight-year NHL experience. Harding plays it with five minutes to go in the second period now. And the Wild down a pair as Brodziak throws it away at center and then Botman mixes it up with him after dumping it back in. Loose puck to Lovejoy back in the Anaheim zone. He's tracked by Bronziak who finishes his hit. But he works it away and Fowler nudges it ahead. Steckel bounces it in wide with the Minnesota goal. Scandell hard around. Waiting for it on the near boards to Zenit Kanopka but he didn't clear the zone. Agliano kept it in, and then Parisi came back to knock it away. Parise sends it across. And it's fired in by Spurgeon, who heads to the bench for a change. Bauer with a rolling puck in the corner. Draws a lot of attention and then reverses it up the near wall to Cogliano. He just throws an area pass off the boards deep into the Minnesota zone. No ice, and it's Winnick for Susan. Kanopka again only able to get it to center and the Ducks do not get back on side. Second assist on the Perry goal a moment ago goes to Ryan Getzloff. That extends some pretty incredible scoring streaks for him as well. Points in 15 straight games but officially now Brian a 13 game scoring streak. Yeah. The only reason that it's not a longer streak of course because Getzloff missed those three games with that upper body injury. Last 15 games, now 22 points for the captain. Perry brings it in on the right side. Fakes, then takes the shot. Harding wasn't about to leave that post. Now Penner in the corner with Getzlaw. Working in tight quarters. Lindholm sweeps it back down low. And Charlie Coyle pumped there by Perry. Zucker chips it past. The on-rushing Grant and numbers for the wild. Through center, Coyle goes around. And brings it in on a stick save by Hiller. Charlie Coyle, a big, impressive-looking young player. And he showed off some of the skills on that rush. Yeah, he's a powerful kid. He's not maybe the most gifted goal, natural goal scorer, but big power forwards are hard to come by in this league. There's a fluttering shot from the point, tipped on the way, and Hiller did a good job to stay with it. Now Ballard looking for a tip fired and wide as Kanopka was coming out of the corner. Fontaine loses the handle up the boards and Solani gets the legs going and dumps it to the near corner. Paul Mary can't get around Ballard but battles for the puck and wins it in the corner for Solani. Fontaine pushes it ahead and back come the Wild with 2.35 to go in the middle period. Allen ties up the stick of Kanaka. Danny Heatley is there but that's taken away by Nick Benino. Botman underneath Heatley reverses it back. Allen, his defense partner, nifty pass up the middle to Benino. He'll find Solani. Ducks want to change. Tamu had it knocked off his stick as he came inside the blue line. He's thinking about shooting that puck and just could not find the handle. Now Lovejoy being tracked by Coy, who hit the referee as he does get it away to center. Jackman turns on the Jets and brings it in. Scandella tips it away. The more we watch Tim Jackman, he is a straight-ahead player, isn't he? He is up and down the wing, nothing fancy. North-south guy. Very, very, very much so. Under two to play, second period. Shots 25-17 in favor of the Ducks, who lead two to nothing. To the point, Brodeen. And his pass intercepted off the end boards. Nick can play by Fowler to reverse away from all the pressure. Boy, that skating ability of Cam Fowler. Allowed 
allows him to escape trouble. Valeski drops it off for Cogliano inside the Minnesota strike. Back to the line that's following. Rodin pitch forks it up the wall and Kanapka will bring it to center. Into the middle of the ice. Parisi chips it to the corner, but Fowler gets back. Cam looking to end his shift, but he's in a tough spot to do it. The far side defense in the second period. And he'll be able to get that change as Getzloff backhands it in. Under a minute to go now in the period is Penner doing the omen's work. Keep the puck alive. Perry very nearly came over and came away with it. Lindholm feeds it back in for Getzloff. In front for Perry, but that pass was blocked. Cook at center. Can't get it in his skates. A couple of times across the blue line, and now Lindholm fails to get it out as he tried to go up the glass. It skitters across to Perry, and he makes sure. Penner strides after it. The end of a shift, he'll nudge it into the Minnesota zone. Suter got the angle on him, and as I mentioned, Dustin was at the end of the shift, so he'll turn and get that change. 15 seconds left, second period. All the scoring in the game has come here in the middle frame. And there's a pass by Spurgeon blocked all the way back into the Minnesota zone. Forcing the Wild to put it up on the glass. This will be an icing call with 4.7 seconds left. Well, this second period uh, could not have unfolded any better for the Ducks. They get a couple of pucks past Harding. They'd have more than two, if not for a couple of spectacular saves by the Wild Netminder. And on the opposite end, they have done just a terrific job of shutting down the Wild. There's just very few scoring chances. We call we call it three quality scoring chances for the Wild all night. In the waning seconds, just trying to get it to the net, Fowler's shot misses the mark. And Anaheim takes a two-goal lead to the locker room after 40 minutes of play. Yeah, they're going to want to come out strong in that first five minutes of the third period and just don't give the Wild any hope whatsoever. The other thing, John, very disciplined effort tonight from the Ducks are not putting the Wild on the power play. So Anaheim gets the only two goals of the game in the second period. The rookie Alex Grant gets the scoring started. And then after a tough period physically, Corey Perry does what he does best. He bounces back to double Anaheim's lead. 2-0, Ducks. All rights to this broadcast are reserved in any rebroadcast, recording, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Anaheim Ducks is expressly prohibited. A lovely night out on the Grand Terrace, in part because the Ducks have a 2-0 lead over Minnesota. Corey Perry has one of those goals, and if it seems like he's scoring every night, well, it's because he is. He's got nine in his last nine games. And he just keeps rolling. You can tell that he's feeling. He's got so much confidence. But it's, it also, as we look back at some of these goals, you, you look at the second effort that is involved in scoring a lot of them tonight. He just wins a battle for that bouncing puck that comes off the end board. Quite a show Corey Perry's been putting on. 21 goals on the season now. You go back to that Hart Trophy winning season when he scored 50. He had the fabulous finish. I don't think you can underscore, Brian, the fact that the Olympics, again this season, it's an Olympic year, are out there. And it seems like regardless of what Corey Perry achieves, he always seems to be... Part of the conversation of some of the pundits, not you and I by any stretch, but being told what he can't do and whether he can make an Olympic team again. He's done everything in his hockey career. You know, I, 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 I talked to a couple of scouts about Corey Perry, and they will tell you that one of the most amazing things they ever saw was when Corey Perry was a junior player and head-to-head -head in the Memorial Cup the final tournament, if you will, for Canadian junior hockey supremacy. And Corey Perry outplayed Sidney Crosby, who was, you know, by far and away the best player available in the upcoming draft. And they said uh, it wasn't even close as to who was the MVP of that tournament. He was that good. He is a big game player, Corey Perry. And I have always contended, just tell him what he can't do, and all he will do is go out and show you that you're wrong. Ducks have it in their own zone as Lovejoy gets the reverse from Fowler around the wall. Brodeen will hold it in. Koivu gets a stick on it for the Ducks and comes up with it. And as it's protected, Cogliano rolls it diagonally the length of the ice. And with the fresh ice, it will go far enough. 
for an icing call. Just 35 seconds into this the third period. I'm waiting to see at what point in the game, trailing by a couple of goals, the Minnesota Wild activate their defense, get them involved in the cycle. They're, they're still you know, pretty high in the offensive zone. It's a conservative approach thus far. Brodziak into the middle and his shot blocked away by Lovejoy. Wild average under two goals a game on the road. They've been shut out in two of their last three road games. As Scandella winds it around. Behind the net centering pass off the skate of Lovejoy. As Mitchell was trying to set up Brodziak and now it's over the glass and on a play. It's a good look at the probably the likeliest candidate to join the rush. The smallest defenseman Spurgeon. He can really wheel. He's got a very surprisingly good shot as well. He's only got one goal on the season. Former Spokane Chief. You wouldn't think of it, but Spurgeon, the leading shot blocker this season for the Wild. He's paired with Scandella, and Penner tries to split the two of them to get to a loose puck, but it's Spurgeon who plays it back. Grant hinges over as Lindholm was under duress, and his rim around the boards takes a Minnesota bounce. Zucker fires it right through the crease. Homecoming for Jason Zucker here at Honda Center, and he chops a puck loose for Charlie Coyle. Brodeen below the goal line. Nino Niederreiter has not been a big part of this one tonight for Minnesota. Youngster who came over from the Islanders in an offseason trade for Cal Clutterbuck who has been a nice addition, a very physical player when you listen to Mike Yo talk about him, but Brian, you and I were talking during the second intermission that Niederreiter, at least to this point, hasn't been much of a factor tonight. There's been a lot of quiet nights, I, I think, for the Minnesota Wild in this one. And uh, they have started, however, John, we wondered, they have started to get their D a little bit more involved. They're pinching down the boards in the offensive zone. Botman holds one in and waving at it with the blocker as it's high and wide was Harding. Batted at by Benino. Can't keep it in the zone. And here's Danny Heatley. Heatley fans on it. Does get it over for Fontaine off the boards. The rookie in behind the net tries to center. And a good job on Kanapka done by Botman. Kanapka was able to receive the pass but couldn't do anything with it. Solani loses it at the blue line. Heatley nudges it the other way, gets it back from Kanapka. Drops it off, Stoner throws it to the corner. Lovejoy wins the race to it there. Koivu drops it back, and Kyle Palmieri has it. He finds some ice, gets it to center red, and feathers it into the Minnesota zone and turns for a chain. Ballard reverses it away from Koivu and then gets it back as he circles the net. Parise gives it to him. Pulls up inside the line. His shot blocked by Fowler wide. Lovejoy's going to take a penalty here as he hit Pominville along the near boards and the Wild will get their first power play of the game 43 minutes into it. Yeah, and this is what they've been waiting for. Something to get this offense ignited. It's going to be a boarding penalty against Ben Lovejoy. He didn't really drill Jason Pominville face first into the boards. He held up a little bit, but the shoulders were square to the boards at the point of contact. So the Wild, over 20% on the year on the power play, but just two for 20 in their last nine games get their first chance. The emphasis from, sorry, Johnny, the emphasis has been an outworking the penalty killing unit from Mike Yo. There's a shot tipped on the way, loose in the slot, and the Ducks able to chip it away. Here comes Getzloff striding after it, but he won't be able to run it down. And Mike Yo told me this morning, he said that the Wild when they're successful on the power play, are more creative and attacking more than not. And obviously of late, it's been of not, just two of 20. However, still a top 10 power play unit in the league. Nico Koivu strides in. Parisi leads the team with seven power play goals. Pominville has four. They're both on the ice right now. Pominville tries to get the tip, gets the rebound, and scores. This is just a very smart shot by Suter. It's low, it's into the pads of the goaltender Hiller. And the butterfly goaltender yields a big rebound that Pominville jumps on. Watch this shot. Quick little wrist shot, traffic in front. Rebound gets away through the feet of Cam Fowler and a quick move as Pominville's gonna take it from the forehand of the backhand and uh, boy, that's a nice set of hands. 
on Jason Pominville. He just hoists that up into the top of the net. What a, what a season for him. That's goal number 15 for Jason Pominville. That's a team leading total. Remember when we were in Minnesota for the second game of the year earlier that day, the team had announced his new five year, $28 million contract. So Pominville, who came over in a deadline deal from the Buffalo Sabres, the only team he'd ever been a part of a season ago, knows where he's going to be because that's an extension. That means this season, then five more. That was a deal that when I heard it, I thought, well, Buffalo is just going to the bottom because, you know, they got Johan Larson, good prospect, Matt Hackett, decent goaltending prospect, first and a second round pick. So, you know, they got, that, that's all about the future. Matt Cook bats down a long stretch pass and carries in behind the goal. Grant lost his stick for a moment, but was able to regain it. So 15th of the year for Pominville. Boy, everybody in black screaming that that puck went into the net and came back onto the ice surface. It may have been the correct call, but if you're the Ducks, Brian, you have to keep playing because if you don't hear a whistle, it didn't touch the net. They get the call, but that could have been disastrous. The sales job worked. Yeah. Eventually, one of the officials uh, agreed and blew the whistle. It's kind of a strange game. See Corey Perry over a little chat with Matt Cook. Cook's a guy, of course, that uh, has cleaned up his act significantly since he arrived in Minnesota. Yeah, just 16 penalty minutes this season coming into tonight. Of course, he and Getzloff picked up a couple of unsportsman lights, coincidental in the first period. Cook's been known to take some liberties over time. Now it's Charlie Coyle down low in the Anaheim zone and clearly Minnesota energized by the power play goal by Pominville. Yeah, they got they got a chance now. I mean they weren't getting much done in this game but now uh, they've got life. Perry won a puck battle and Allen leads it out of the zone and Perry nearly stripped it from Car Charlie Coyle. Ryan Suter he got the assist on the power play goal along with Miko Koivu. Plays it ahead and Zucker spun around a couple of times by Ben Lovejoy. Winnick drops down to help out, keeps it on the boards. To the line, Scandella holds it in. His shot friendly fire as that took Fontaine down. Bouncing puck at center. Winnick settles it, tries to throw it in. Leave it right to Suter. You know, I, I always think that games like this, you're playing against a team that doesn't score a lot of goals. That this boils down to the little details for the Ducks. Spurgeon fakes the shot, tries to pass into the middle off a stick to the corner. And Heatley trying to get away down low from Nick Benino, jabs it away. Scandella quick to activate from the point. And now Solani curls off the boards with it. Paul Mary at center. Picks it up, brings it in, waits for help, throws a long wrist shot that is gloved off by Hardy. The Wild have gotten one back, cutting the Ducks' lead in half. Complete your entire loan online at don'tbebroke.com. The Ducks' next game is against the Oilers on Sunday, and then four road games prior to the Christmas break. And the sick bay report from head coach Bruce Boudreau was promising this morning he said that Matthew Perot and Francois Beauchemin are actually getting close to returning. And he also said, which was a little bit of a surprise, that Jackson Silverberg, he would expect, would be available to play at some point on that four-game road trip. So, knocking on wood here, when I say this, it appears that the Ducks might be getting a little bit healthier in the near future. Well, it was very heartened to hear that you and I were feeling better as well <laughs> after the fatigue of that last road trip. 2-1 Anaheim has the lead as Jackman tips it into the middle of the ice. And Winnick got it inside the Minnesota line. Ducks try to change and countering quickly are the Wild. Lovejoy spotting it away from Commonville, who has the Minnesota goal in this game. And now he steps into a passing lane again, skipping it away from Commonville, and now gets it deep into the Minnesota zone. Bruce Boudreau would love to see his club play in the Minnesota zone. Wow, Harding, the 
strange little play off his blocker and off the top of his blocker and nearly threw it back out into the slot. Fowler behind the net. And Solani moves it along for Winnick. Hard pass hits. Fowler in the back and then one-handed by Cogliano. I'm a little bit surprised that the Wild have not started to double shift for Eze and Commonville with uh, some of their other centermen at this point in the game, John, because they're not getting much at all from lines two, three, or four. Well, a holiday gift idea for the Ducks fan on your list. Power player calendars are available now for the holidays. You can get them at the Ducks team store, powered by Reebok. Proceeds benefit the Anaheim Ducks Foundation. Off the icing call, Getzloff wins the draw cleanly. Bot one times it on. That was ripped wide. I don't know if Harding ever saw it. Rodine shovels it up the wall, and Allen quick to play it back for Bot. Countering in come Perry and Penner. Perry's shot well wide. Getzloff holds the zone on the far side. Penner reaches and whips it back in. Botman comes over, delivers the hit on Cook, who then dumps it as the puck comes out center ice. Puck deflected off a Minnesota player. It's Brodziak, so no icing. Then Allen plays it ahead, but off the stick of Paul Mary. Spurgeon goes rink wide. Zucker into the middle for Niederreiter, and it's taken away by Botman. Touched by Solani as he races into the Minnesota zone after. Drops it back. Nice setup for Lindholm. Oh, and that just couldn't get through the mosh pit in front of the Minnesota net. Paul Mary was there. Spurgeon was there. That puck hit something on its way through. He thought it might have hit Spurgeon. And now turnover at the blue line. Solani sends Benino the other way. Stoner ends up with it. And plays it over the head of Paul Mary to center. And Niederreiter takes a pretty good hit from Benino as he throws it into the glass and out of play. Let's go back to that opportunity for Hampus Lindholm. Accepted a nice little drop pass and saw the traffic. And it's off the right leg of Jared Spurgeon. And Harding can't see the shot. He has no idea where it's going because Paul Mary had done the right thing and gone to the front of the net. So a little bit unlucky there as Lindholm's shot is blocked. Josh Harding, in 24 appearances this season, has surrendered more than two goals only four times as we get an icing call here against the Wild. So the two goals tonight for Anaheim, right on the cusp, but it may have to be enough. The league's leading that minor in goals against average has been here before. Well, he, he's kept his team in the game. And in that second period, even though he gave up a pair of goals, you know, two 10 bell saves I, I had from Harding. Uh, the only reason why they're they're even close at this point. Winnick battling down low with Cogliano. But they're in the game, John. This is a nervous type of game. One goal game. At, you know, going into this building, you want to believe Minnesota would have said, if we were within a goal, halfway point of the third period, would we take it? Yeah, you bet they would. We're 50 seconds away from just that. As this one touched at center, so Hiller stops it for Fowler. He brings it right back out the near side. Lovejoy hard ahead at center. Bolesky gets it back and pitches it in on the backhand. Ballard circles back now in behind his goal for his defense partner, Clayton Stoner. Stoner moves it ahead. Lindholm intercepts at center and lobs it right back in. Forcing Ballard to play it is Steckel. And now forcing Ballard to hit the brakes. Stoner's pass is Aaron at center. Lindholm settles it. Jackman with the prudent play just backhands it deep. Yeah, nothing fancy. Uh, again, that line has been very trustworthy for Bruce Boudreaux. You know, they, they have definitely done the job in terms of getting pucks in, making safe plays with the puck. We're a little time off the clock. Pardon me, Brian. Whistle here because that puck hit a Minnesota player on the bench and came back onto the ice surface. So. 10.06 to go, third period, and faceoff comes back inside the wild blue line. A lot of breathing room for the Ducks in this game. One goal lead. They haven't really generated much of an attack. Or probably Lindholm's block shot, the best chance that they have had in this period. These teams have only combined for five shots at the third period. We're halfway through. 
the Wild got one on the power play at 348. Pominville's 15th of the year from Suter and Koivu. And it's a one goal game, 2 1. Nice read by Botman as he picks off a pass in the neutral zone. Sends Perry ahead. He was partially tripped. Whips it from a bad angle right on. Penner tries to go between the legs to get it back to him. Botman again. Creating the contact with Matt Cook. You've got to love how Sammy Botman competes. He, he does not pay attention to who he's playing against. It doesn't matter how big the player is. Botman's going to take a run. He doesn't know any other way. Plus two in his last two games, and now he blows a wheel in the neutral zone, and Coyle is in. Goes against the green and hits it high. Charlie Coyle did exactly what he wanted there. Showed great patience, but that's a big time save. And it all started when Botman fell down in the neutral zone. Looked like he was trying to come over. Thought maybe even trying to change, but he blew a wheel, went down in the neutral zone, and Coyle was in clean from the blue line. Wild counter back as Zucker brings it in, only to have it lobbed back away by Lovejoy, and this will be an icing call against Anaheim. Charlie Coyle had great speed in the neutral zone, and watch Sammy Botman, he just blows a tire. Brian Allen was in no man's land, and away goes Coyle. Makes a great move, but my goodness, what a save with the left toe by Iona Siller. Full split as he gets the left foot across and all the way over to the goal post. That's a big time stop. Ducks win the draw off the icing call. Solani trying to brush it ahead through neutral ice. Knocked back by Suter and a break for the Ducks as Minnesota goes offside coming the other way. The biggest break for the Ducks in this third period. Compliments of the right pad of Jonas Hiller keeping Anaheim on top. Games like this you got to bail out your teammates sometimes when you're a goaltender. And that was a big bailout stop by Jonas Hiller moments ago. He got 27 saves. Most of them have been from the perimeter. But that stop on Charlie Coyle, that's a difference maker. I said it was his right pad. I meant he picked the right pad for the right shot. It happened to be his left pad. I, I, knew, that. I knew you knew that that's what I meant. Miku Koivu wins the draw, so the Koivu brothers have opposed each other a dozen times in the faceoff circle, and Saku has won seven of them tonight. Somewhere, Mrs. Koivu is sitting back in Finland wishing it was 6 6. That's how mothers are. They, just don't, they won't cheer for anybody, they just cheer for everybody. Just when the brothers are playing each other. Long shot by Parisi is blockered out of play by Hiller as we're down to eight minutes to go in a one goal game. Impress your friends and family this season by hosting the ultimate party in a suite for an upcoming Ducks game. Food and drink now included in all suites. Call 714-634-2582 or visit hondacenter.com slash suites. Seeing a lot more of this defensive combination of Spurgeon and Scandella here as we get under the 10 minute mark here in the third period. Well, I got to check after two periods of play. I mentioned Ryan Suter and his ice time coming into this one, averaging nearly half an hour a game on the ice. He's played almost 20 minutes through the first two periods, but it just seems like this parent has drawn the tougher assignment of late as Penner's shot held long enough by Harding for a faceoff. It's nice to the play. Corey Perry gets the puck behind the goal. Recognizes that big Dustin Penner has got a head of steam behind him. Just a little move by Penner. And he grabs hold of the puck, wheels, throws it on net. Hardy wasn't sure. Corey Perry looked like he tried to grab it out of his hand. Left it. Nothing would surprise me. When it comes to Corey Perry, he'll do whatever it takes to score a goal. Pairing of Suter and Brodeen come out on the defensive zone draw to the left of Hardy. And the draw controlled by Matt Cook. And Mitchell's denied as he tries to bring it into the zone. That's why Cook didn't touch the puck because Mitchell fell into the Anaheim ice. 
And was still trapped in there. Would have been offside. Perry the other way. Brodine up the boards. Waiting for it at the line is Allen. Wide open Hotman. And he picked his head up and lost the handle. Gets it back. Down low for Perry. Moves it along. Gets lost to the line for Brian Allen. Good shot. Looking for a tip. And he got it from Perry. And all he did is put it on the high glass in the corner. Bachman pinches again, and the puck bounces to center. Brought the other way, Brodziak's first bid blocked, and the second one didn't have much on it, as Hiller steered it to the corner. Jackman broke his stick. A high shot misses everything, and Zucker came off the boards with it. Allen and Zucker both go down in front. Boyle gets the puck back to the line for Ballin. And Valeski chops it away and stays in. Stoner shot, knocked down by Steckel. Does a good job to get the puck out of the zone, but again, play on, boys, is the message. Yeah, and uh, the referees have kind of put the whistles away here. I thought Zach Okozu got away with a little hook in the defensive zone moments ago, so. Grant stepped up in the neutral zone, swatted one back, a wild hit possession, and Ballard back hands it around. A big hit between Grant and Zucker in the corner, and the puck comes to Steckel. Cagliano had to hit the brakes to st stay on side, excuse me. Ducks still Minnesota has it again. Just with one four checker at this point, and again, playing by the score, protecting now a one goal lead. Pass intended for Koibu, broken up. Good play defensively by Fowler, who got his stick in the passing lane. Wild bring it back in, Hammondville. He has a goal in each of the games this season against Anaheim. Cagliano plays it back. Spurgeon to Spandella. Up the left side off the stick of Parisi. And behind the end of the goal. And Hiller puts it back up on the glass. Good play by Jonas Hiller. Perry leads it for Getzloff. Drops it for Penner. Perry to the net. Penner takes the shot. Harding made the stop. And it's deflected over the glass and out of play. Buckle your seatbelts. The home stretch coming in a one goal game at Honda Center. Seems like we've seen this before. The Ducks and Wild in a two to one hockey game at Honda Center. With just over five to go. Had a pretty familiar look in these one goal games for these two teams. Yeah, they certainly have. So both comfortable, obviously, playing uh, tight games. Minnesota's. Was a little bit surprising when I saw that they were 10-1-5 in one goal games this year. Wilder third in the Central, sixth in the West, and yet they have only six fewer points than the Ducks, who are first in the Pacific and second in the West. And we've talked about separation and winning games and regulation and the ability to do that against other teams that are currently in the playoff mix. So Anaheim would love to get the two points here, and they'd love to get it, obviously, in regulation. But a long way to go with 4.58 remaining. There's a good look at Zach Parise. He's only had two attempted shots in this game. Both were, by the way, on the goal, but neither one considered a great-A chance. So watch out for Parise because it's something to uh, hold him off kind of that day. Trying to bring it from below the goal line right there on the backhand, but Hiller got there. Before the game this morning, Bruce Boudreau told us he thought the key to winning this game was stopping the top line for the Wild of Koivu, Hammondville, and Parise. Hammondville has the only Minnesota goal. It came on the power play. Hey, both teams have done a decent job of keeping the top line for the other from dominating the game and being the difference for this one. But here's Parise, and Fowler got his stick in there. Cam Fowler. Continues his strong play. Puck eludes Hiller behind the net, and Lovejoy serves it back. A rolling puck that will not go far enough for ice. I think it actually went off the poison stick as it was shot around the board. So, the uh, reason why there's no call in play. Montaigne plays it off the glass. Grant wires it around and gets off, gets it out, and raises the puck between Perry and Scandella. And Scandella able to knife it away with the mark with his long lead. Gets off, knocks down Spurgeon's clearing it down. He returns the favor. And Niederreiter knocked it down at the line. Back come the wild. You know Niederreiter. Curls back, finds the late man. Spurgeon partially blocked by Penner. 
Good job there by Dustin. Just got a piece of the stick on it. And now Gensloff nudges it back. He gets center red and pushes deep into the Minnesota zone. Head it right to the net. And Hardy with the left pad say The big lo locomotive that gets rolling down that left wing and uh, surprised Jared Spurgeon a little bit. Heatley feathers it down low for Niederreiter. Leading on him is Lindholm. Down to 3-10 to go in the game as Benino joins the fray and wins the puck. Up the middle, careful to settle it. The speckle and rolling puck. Harding has to come out. And Steckle swings and misses. As the duck player ends up in the net, that's Matt Molesky. And this faceoff will come outside. That's the indication from the referee. But a good effort from Matt Molesky. Puts his head down. Steckle just slips it into the open ice. He jumps around Brodeen. Boy, Brodeen can skate. Harding plays it. Molesky crashes into the post. Grateful that he has a helmet on. Boy, the follow through yeah. of the shot by Harding also got the stick right into the face of Matt Molesky. And now Koivu, Saku that is, thrown from the circle as Winnick now to oppose Miko, who wins the draw. Miko Koivu, the all-time leading scorer, goal scorer that is, in Minnesota Wild history, leads the team in assists this season. Trip along the boards right off that face off in front of the Anaheim bench. But as I mentioned earlier, play on is the message. And that's what the Wild and Ducks will do here. I always thought that uh, circumstances like this really play to the favor of the team that is leading. In the middle, Suter jumps up, and I believe that got through to Hiller. And it comes all the way out center ice. Breezy brings it back in, wires it around. We'll keep an eye on Harding as the game clock winds to 2.15. Gets off, reverses in the corner, and is able to bounce it diagonally back into the Minnesota zone. No icing as Brodeen watches the mates go for a change. And it's a goal, just a huge block shot for Koivu. Zucker drops it back. Brodeen, I think, is trying to get the bench for a change as he feeds it ahead off the stick of Fontaine. Hiller stops it and then sends it around. Zucker is waiting for it. This pass intercepted by Botten. Tried to reverse it to Allen. That was knocked down. Now Allen behind the net on the second effort. Does come up with it. Coyle pressures him, so he uses the glass to clear. And another foot race. Penner all over Spurgeon. But Spurgeon able to turn away. Good pass. Great outlet pass from Spurgeon. Zucker trying to jump around Allen to the corner after. Looking at the bench is Harding. He's between the circles. There he goes. The Minnesota net is empty as Fowler takes the puck away. Looks up ice and does the smart thing. Makes the pass. And Valeski offside or did the puck go in the Minnesota bench? Yeah, I think it goes into the... I think the, it went in the bench. Yeah, we got, a, I think, a linesman that's injured on the play over in front of the wild bench. That's the referee. No, nope, you're right. It is the linesman. My bad. Tough guys, these guys. They take a lot of abuse. Yeah, Derek. There's, so yeah, they're, they're not worth, wearing much. You know what? They opened up the gate, John, and nobody closed it. Here was that block shot by Saku Koivu off of the uh, to kick save and a beauty off the left foot for Koivu. With the face off at center, Harding goes back into the Minnesota goal crease. And again, the puck along the boards looked like it went in the Minnesota bench. Batted out of midair by Winnick. Harding again strides to the Minnesota bench. Down to a minute five to go. Lovejoy reverses for Fowler, who keeps it on the boards. Winnick chops it ahead, and that is empty. At the Minnesota end of the ice, the sixth attack around for the Wild. Fowler trying to play it up the boards. Parisi gets it behind the net. Brings it to the near side, now hooks it back. Koivu in front, falling. Zucker couldn't get the shot on net, but Parisi gets it back. Miku Koivu brings it near side. She's trying to just shovel it into the blue paint, but it's blocked a couple of times. Winnick pipes it to the line. Held in, Suter's wrist shot, blocked, and left to him. He'll flutter it back. He won't go far enough for icing. Half a minute left in the game. 2-1 Ducks with the net empty, and Minnesota with the sixth attacker on. Suter wires it around and in Lindholm. Trying to reverse it, does. Allen behind the net, that squirts in front. Counts down by Penner, who gives it to Perry. Perry pulls up, wisely finds Getzloff. Stick handles, and then loses the handle at the blue line. Ten seconds, though, is all that's left. The Wild bring it to center. Danny Heatley backhands it in, and Brian Allen behind the net, just trying to eat the puck as the clock winds down. And the hockey game is over tonight at Honda Center. The Ducks remain without a regulation loss at home this season as they
They down the wild two to one. They're now five zero oh, and two in their last seven. A hard fought one goal win. You know, to be this good at home, we got to find different ways to win games. Well, Anaheim territorially dominated the first two periods of this game. The Wild made a game of it. Jonas Hiller had to make a huge breakaway save on Charlie Coyle to preserve the two points. And again, John, I can't say how important it is. Two points in regulation against the team currently in the playoff race is huge for Anaheim. The best start at Honda Center in franchise history continues. Corey Perry with another game winner that ties him with his twin. Ryan Getzlaub for the league lead. The Ducks win 2-1, to one, and we listen in on tonight's three-star selection. Now here are tonight's three stars of the game as voted by the broadcast media and brought to you by Honda. Tonight's third star of the game. From the Minnesota Wild, number 37, Josh Harding. Tonight's second star of the game with a goal from the Ducks, number 51, Alex Grant. And tonight's first star of the game with the game winning goal from the Ducks, number 10, Corey Perry. You know, I've been joking with Corey Perry about how old these post-game interviews are getting, but I know scoring goals is uh, not getting old. Explain uh, the success tonight, Corey. Well, I think uh, we executed our game plan, and you know, we we led them to under 25 shots, and I mean, that's uh, that's how we got to play at home. I mean, it's a simple home game. You know, grind it out and uh, come away with two points. Jonas Hiller made an outstanding save on Coyle around the nine-minute mark of that period. You guys have such wonderful goaltending right now, and you might have some healthy bodies coming back here in the next couple of weeks. How much does that put you at ease? Well, it's huge. Uh, I mean, Hillsy made a great save there, and you know, it's a pretty skilled player coming in on him, and uh, and he, you know, he kind of kind of made it look easy. You know, big push, and and uh, you know, those are big saves that we need him to to stop, and and he did that tonight. All right, enjoy the next couple of days off, and we'll see you again soon. All right, thanks, guys. Johnny? Thank you, Lisa. 241st goal of Corey Perry's career. The game winner tonight His 47th career game winner as the Ducks win 2-1 over the Wild at Honda Center. Ducks Live is next. <laughs> 